Yeah. Like shortly after I started working there, some older man came up to me. He's like, son, your hair looks like the roots coming down from that tree. And I was like, you know, if I ever get the opportunity to hang upside down in the banyan tree, I'm definitely... I actually that's got hilarious. the opportunity to climb up there and hang upside down. Oh my god, that's funny. Welcome to the Landscape Cafe, brought to you with support from Fort Myers Garden Service, maintaining and protecting business and residential landscapes. Visit fortmyersgardenservice.com or call 239-990-7494. What is your... Right. So They need guidance, they need... There's it's a totally different ball game i don't even understand it but you're right it's so different and given our uh, our climate and our paradise like uh, conditions most of the year time of the year we are blessed and able to grow many different trop- types of tropical fruit as well as vegetables in our growing season which unlike many other times of the year or other parts of the country, ranged from about November to March. Okay, cool. That's awesome. That's pretty good. Where, um, and that's something also for Myers Garden Service, that's where we're gonna be branching. That's one of the niche services that we're gonna be offering um, here in the future, design, installation, consulting services for uh, the permaculture and that whole it's it's incredible it's not a service that necessarily many or any are offering on a professional level and uh it's going to be very exciting that it's going to be up in our uh, up in our future that we're working towards slowly but surely one of those time one of those things that uh project that takes time to develop but once it's developed it grows really strong and, and uh, i'm excited for that eric's going to lead that part up and um he's going to be able to focus on that and deliver quality um, and that's going to be exciting it's going to be really cool for southwest florida i know he follows uh, quite a few different people uh, but i think are they central florida most of the people that you follow um on social media that that are doing this big time oh yeah there there's people all over the country at, okay. nowadays that are doing things like that getting rid of their lawn and planting food not a crime that's cool it's awesome it's it's so unique and and i totally can connect with you um when you say you is a different connection with the food that you get to grow and eat yourself i mean that's it's totally totally different and and even when you get kids involved too and, and they can start to understand um and you can teach them these these important things you know we need food you know, we can grow this ourselves. You know, it just takes effort. I mean, there's so many life lessons in landscaping, gardening, um, growing food. I mean, just planting seeds. I mean, there are so many analogies and, and or life lessons or just good conversations that we can have um, with kids that are growing up and, and um, families that we're raising or even just friends, you know, friends, wives, anybody. Um, the conversations that can be held in the landscape field um whether it's doing it for work or doing it for fun uh, or or even volunteering um and that's actually that's kind of the heart of this conversation this this podcast right here is to have conversations and get to talk about things that normally maybe we wouldn't have time for but carving it out so um that's awesome. I'm super excited about this podcast and getting the opportunity to do this. Um, Eric, you want to share a little bit about uh, the Edison Ford Estates? You worked there for quite some time, and um, it's kind of neat. Every time I mention that to you know one of our new prospect customers, um, they always get excited about that. And I think that's really neat. You want to share a little bit about your time there, how long you spent there, what were some of your greatest accomplishments, what was it like? Yeah. So, um, for anybody that doesn't know, the Edison Ford Winter Estates is pretty much the premier botanical resource in Fort Myers, not South Florida, Southwest Florida. And it was where Thomas Edison and Henry Ford had their winter estates. Well, it is now a museum and 
approximately 20 acres of historically maintained uh, estates where we had a variety of uh, trees and plants that Edison had done research on, as well as different types of tropical fruit that the families were growing at the time when they lived at the estates. Um, I worked there for five years and I was the horticulture specialist. Um, in that time, I had many, many wonderful opportunities and um, learned the majority of what I know about plants, I would say. Uh, one of my greatest accomplishments or the greatest accomplishment I had while working there was to design, build, and install a 275 square foot raised bed display to represent the Edison Ford Winter Estates. And it was installed in front of the U.S. Botanic Garden in Washington, D.C. for the American Public Gardens Association Conference up in 2019. It was on display for about six months. It provided a historical aspect, a botanical aspect, and a part of American history many people didn't realize existed when they hear Edison and Ford. They think electricity and cars. That's right. It. Right. They don't realize how much more they were both involved in. And, and the main thing being uh, searching for domestic source of rubber. Because mm -hmm. back in 1920s, they were doing just that here in Fort Myers um, in preparation or in times of war. They would need to be able to produce rubber, and that's what they were searching for. That's awesome. So were they trying? Were they searching that through the plants or or for growing plants, or they were just doing that in general? You were saying separately. Uh, well, there is a natural, like latex is naturally derived for from ficus trees. So they were searching for, they oh. grow, they were growing ficus trees. And that's why there's the large banyan tree on the property at the estates. And that's but awesome. Edison discovered he could produce it or pr extract more latex from goldenrod which is a typical weed in the Midwest. Mm. Then he could from large ficus trees that only grow in a small portion of the country. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. So it was, I mean, just as much as in his laboratory outside in the dirt where he's putting in different plants and researching things, um, that whole, all those grounds there was historic research and, and stuff that he was actually really driving his projects with that's pretty cool that's pretty awesome i actually didn't know that part um i just thought it was a beautiful botanical garden and i i uh love to learn learn that he was actually out there doing that stuff um so it sounds like he was pretty involved in the landscape as well huh um not quite at that point because he was up in age but he had a lot of workers that were in the landscape gotcha that's really cool that's awesome. Well, very cool, man. I think we got some good stuff. Talked a little bit about the Edison homes, garden service. To give people that, oh, wow, these, people, these guys are going to come out and they're actually talking about. And they say they, they're not just saying that they know what they're talking about. Like, they clearly know. What they're right, right. They're communicating I, about Almost right, every right. time I go out there, like, with these new clients, they're like, yeah, I've worked with so many people. And none of them even just know what they're, I feel like I know more about the plants. And I'm like, no, oh, I understand. Yeah. Like, so me in. not saying that that's not the case here, but right. I'm not going to tell you I know something that I don't. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, what's that picture of it? It's too small. I can't see it, but it looks like the banyan trees at the Edison home. Oh, yeah. It's when I was hanging upside down in the banyan tree. That's funny. I was thinking that was you. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's, you got it's all the way up there. Uh, That's crazy. They had a kid's day and there's a company that came from Clearwater and they, uh, they set up all the rigging so that the kids could climb in the tree. And, what? Uh, 
So of course I did it because yeah. like shortly after I started working there, some older man came up to me. He's like, son, your hair looks like the roots coming down from that tree. And I was like, you know, if I ever get the opportunity to hang upside down in the banyan tree, I actually that's got hilarious. the opportunity to climb up there and hang upside down. Oh my God, that's funny. I think that wraps wraps everything up that I wanted to touch on and cover with you today, man. Thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you for talking and being a part of the conversation more so less. Um, I appreciate it and, and uh, thank you for your time, man. Absolutely. It was a pleasure to be a part of it and I'm looking forward to many things in our future. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks, man. We hope you've enjoyed this series. Don't forget to subscribe because before you know it, we'll be back with another great conversation. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. The best place to rate or follow the show is at thelandscapecafe.com. The Landscape Cafe is a production of Pure Landscaping and the Niche Podcast Network. Learn more about Bailey, Katie, and the team by visiting purelandscaping.com.